One winter's morning, Toby was trundling down the line with some stone. Mavis, his engine, had been acting up in the cold, so he had stayed the night at the quarry to help. Now, he was heading home. Mrs. Kindly was waiting to wave good morning to the first train. Hello, Mrs. Kindly. Make sure you stay wrapped up. With a ring of his bell, Toby steamed past and into the tunnel. Mrs. Kindly turned to go back inside when she heard a loud... <laughs> Toby's driver and fireman trudged out of the tunnel, looking dazed. Are you boys all right? She asked worriedly. We're fine, sighed the driver. But Toby's run into an icicle in the tunnel. Bless your souls. Come in. You can use my telephone to call for help. The news soon reached the fat controller, who ordered that all trains must stop outside the tunnel to let crews check for any danger. What a swizz! grunted Thomas the Tank Engine. I shouldn't be made to sit in the freezing cold just because Toby couldn't see a great big piece of ice. It'll make me late. Annie and Clarabel tittered anxiously to one another. They hated the thought of being late. They soon arrived at the tunnel. Thomas was brought to a stop while his crew hopped down to inspect. Please don't be long, pleaded Thomas. We'll be as quick as we can, his fireman promised. But it was a long tunnel, and his driver and fireman had to be thorough. At last, they came back. Thomas hoped he could make up time. He did make up some, but not enough. Thomas couldn't help it. They were late day after day after day. Something needs to be done, Thomas huffed to the coaches. Oh dear, Annie fussed. You and your schemes. Well, we can't keep arriving late every afternoon. I'm going to figure something out. You see if I don't. Just be sensible, Thomas, dear. Thomas went off to do some shunting. He found Percy, struggling with a van. Need some help, Percy? Hmm? Oh, yes, please, Thomas. I'm meant to be bringing this rock salt to dock. But I think... Uh, the wheels are... Frozen? Huh. Thomas was puzzled too. Then he noticed he was wishing steam where the van had been. An idea struck him like an icicle in the funnel. The next day, Thomas explained his idea to his crew. So we won't need to stop if we just melt all the ice with a good head of steam. It's worth a try, his driver said. Just be careful. They soon set off. Thomas slowed down as the tunnel came into sight. He took a deep breath and whoosh! Thomas's plan worked a treat. The ice quickly melted and started the drip from the tunnel roof. Unfortunately, it also meant that ice-cold water showered Annie and Clarabel like rain. Hoosh! They wailed. Stop, Thomas! Stop! Thomas didn't notice. He was too busy thinking how brilliant his idea had been. Thomas arrived at the big station right on time, feeling very pleased with himself. As the passengers filed out, 
There was a thud from one of Calarabelle's compartments. Everyone was confused. Then they saw. Run us out! Some passengers cried. The water had turned to solid ice and frozen their doors shut. Cinders and ashes, Thomas choked. The passengers kept banging on Clarabelle's door and shouting, while the porter and station master tried to help. Thomas heard a door open and slam shut. Oh, thank goodness you got them out. But it wasn't Clarabelle's door. It was the fat controller's. He came storming out of his office with his teapot. He marched over and poured hot water all over Clarabelle's door. That did the trick. Please accept my deepest apologies. This will not happen again. What I want to know, snapped a passenger, is if that little special effects display will happen again. You'd think the coaches were on fire with all that smoke in the tunnel. The fat controller slowly turned around. Um... Thomas, would you care to explain what this man means by that? I, uh... I didn't want to stop to check the tunnel. It was making me late. So I tried melting the ice away while I went through. It worked pretty well, actually. But then I suppose that's not why you're cross? Your idea to solve the problem was disobeying my orders and creating another. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Sometimes what works out well for you doesn't work the same for others, as we can see here. <sighs> Take these two to thaw out in the carriage shed, he finished. And if they're not ready for the next train, you can do some shunting instead. At least there's no tunnels in the yard. Thomas humbly obliged. The icy stares of Annie and Clarabel were enough to make sure he followed that order. Next time he had a foolproof plan. <laughs> <laughs>